Our next group of speakers will focus on health, enriching human life and society. Human health is impacted by our environment, the bacteria that co-inhabit our bodies, the proteins that our cells produce, our metabolism, and our genomes. Here at UC San Diego, advances in discipline-specific knowledge and novel technological capabilities provide new opportunities for multidisciplinary and translational work with the potential to keep people healthy and transform the delivery of healthcare. Making good on that potential will require the processing of huge amounts of data, for which the campus is well positioned. Key organizing frameworks that support our work in this area include the Institute for Engineering and Medicine, for example, promotes collaborations between faculty in the health sciences and engineering to develop creative new technologies to improve health and clinical care. The Qualcomm Institute provides a meeting ground for engineering, information, and communication technologies, the digital arts, and applications to societal problem solving, and for mapping human and microbial genomics, and for defining the human health and basic biology in terms of integrated omics, genomics, metabomics, proteomics, etc. The San Diego Supercomputer Center exemplifies the tradition of developing the technological infrastructure and data analytic software to enable massive data sets to be applied to complex phenomena. UC San Diego is also a leader in the understanding, prevention, and treatment of many diseases, including cardiovascular, neurological diseases, and cancer. Our next group of speakers will describe some of the ways in which UC San Diego is leading the path to better health through utilization of big data across disciplines. Dr. Lucilla Ono Machado from the Division of Biomedical Informatics will discuss UC San Diego's place at the forefront of the learning healthcare system revolution, finding patterns in healthcare and genomic data by using supercomputers and multidisciplinary teams of experts in medicine informatics, computer science, statistics, and engineering. Lucia Ono Machado received her medical degree from the University of Sao Paulo and her doctoral degree in medical information sciences and computer science from Stanford University. Her research interests include biomedical informatics, predictive modeling, and biomedical data analytics. She is currently the lead investigator on the Biomedical and Healthcare Data Discovery and Indexing Ecosystems Project, a three-year National Institutes of Health funded project to help modernize and transform how researchers share, use, find, and cite biomedical data sets. Tonight, she'll share why data sharing is important in the context of being able to answer real questions from real people, e.g., what would be the best therapy for me? And she'll share the challenges of this important work at the intersection of humanities, science, and engineering. And what I wanted to uh, go through today is some, some thoughts about we are collecting all this data, what does it mean to you? And I must say it will apply to every one of you. So I just want to take a survey here. Who in the past two years has visited a doctor's office or has been a doctor in the past two years? <laughs> All right, some are negligent with their health. I'm not going to comment on that. But the majority of people here uh, have a clinic experience and so on. And why do we care about big data and about this learning healthcare system, this data that are being collected in the clinic while, while you're being seen for well care or for a particular disease? So, how do we enrich human life and society by collecting data in a responsible manner? sharing it and learning from it. So that's the, the thoughts that I want you to uh, get out of this um, uh, presentation with. So two years ago, the Office of Science and Technology Policy of the White House invited a couple of us to help them pass the message that big data is a big deal. It's a big deal in, in education, and a colleague from Stanford presented about that on economics, in uh, healthcare, which I had the privilege of being there representing our sector in physical sciences. And we talked about how big data would change the way we're doing business today in our respective fields. So biomedical informatics, what is it? Well, it deals with big data a lot. 
electronic health records are out there. They have wide adoption in the US. Uh, they're gonna be 100% in a couple of years. So we are collecting that data. What are we doing with it? We are also collecting data from clinical studies for mobile health devices that you, as you just heard from social media. And what is the usage? We just heard today targeted therapy is one of them. Targeted prevention is another one of them disease surveillance and patient safety. And that last one you might have not heard about, but I will talk a little bit about how it's important and how our healthcare system is particularly involved in those efforts. So the thing that makes us unique makes us very difficult to uh, treat disease, to prevent disease. We just heard about that. So how can we use that kind of data plus the data that we were uh, traditionally very used to in medicine? So physical exam, tests in laboratory are very familiar to us. But now that comes genome, transcriptome, proteome, how can we integrate all of that in environmental data in order to uh, treat and prevent disease? So. Patient safety, I said I would um, say a few words about that, and outcomes research. These are the kind of things that you can use the electronic health record uh, to make better. So for example, I have just here a, a screenshot of the uh, Food and Drug Administration website. And as you know, drugs are recalled once in a while, devices are recalled once in a while because they're not safe. They were deemed safe when they were tested on clinical trials, very well controlled with people with few diseases, a uh, few other conditions. When they go out in, uh, at large, people have more than one diseases. People are taking other medications. There are a whole lot of things happening that weren't tested in the clinical trial phase. And by having that information in electronic health records, we can get to that information. So. Also, outcomes for different procedures and therapies, as we heard today, that it's not one size fits all anymore. You are not one disease. You are you who happen to uh, be labeled with that disease. So we need to understand that better. And preventive measures have been uh, to be tailored accordingly. So what, why large data and what big data is important? Because large numbers help us detect this unsafe devices, medications, procedures, much earlier. And this is a slide from uh, my previous institution in Boston, in which we showed that in the beginning you might not have much information, but as you acquire information, if a certain process goes out of control, so this is statistical process control, and you, in this case, you detect a, an increase from 0.5% to 0.6%, that triggers an alert and says something is going wrong here. It's not the expected complication rate for this particular procedure. And you can go after and see, is it a device? Is it a medication? Is it um, a type of operation that is not going well? Now imagine we had that data much earlier. You would prevent many more of these uh, complications if you could aggregate the data from several hospitals, from several clinics, from whole countries and uh, perhaps worldwide. So that's what big data becomes very important. So we here at UCSD have developed models for sharing data access in a responsible manner. So you might be uh, very familiar with this first model here. You download some data, you do some analysis and so on. It doesn't work for clinical data. It doesn't work because it, it, it is um, a concern about privacy. Who can see this data? What kind of research you can do? So there are other ways to go about it. One model is to have a data center in which people come and do their computations there. So you can control very much who has access and so on. The other model that's very popular now and we are using with several institutions is that we create the computation we send this computation to wherever hospitals in other countries and so on, and they come back with the answers. And you can see how that would work for the patient safety issue, because if we're having more events overall than we were predicting we would have, we have to do something about it. So the more data we aggregate and share, the sooner we can detect unsafe uh, devices, drugs, procedures. So what we have done here, because we have all the computer science, we have the engineering, and we have uh, the informatics 
groups working together is to create a privacy protecting cloud in which we can have protected health information identified sometimes, de-identified some other times, uh, and compute in that cloud and allow people who have interesting models to test, who have hypotheses uh, to develop, to invalidate, to go to the, the cloud and, and see whether uh, they're suspicious that this particular device is unsafe, it's used uh, for uh, people with this particular condition, or if this drug, when used for people with a certain genotype, would not be safe. And we know now that even drug dosages should be adjusted according to genotype. So it's very important that we have a, an environment in order to test our hypothesis. What we are doing also is to use a consortium uh, that we developed. We founded a uh, consortium of the five University of California medical centers in order to aggregate data. So UCSD has data on about two million patients. We now have 12 million patients if we aggregate all the University of California medical centers. And we also have means to share it in a very responsible manner. We extended this recently in order to have the whole VA system, which is almost nine million patients in all US states and territories, uh, to have that data computed in the same way so that we can send the computation and get answers from them, as well as safety net clinics, that's clinics uh, serving the underserved in the Los Angeles area. So by having all of that, we have much more data in order to do our discoveries and validations. Uh, Right now, we are also developing a prototype of a, a new model. Currently, all your data is held by the healthcare institution, and the healthcare institution goes through every single step to protect it and share it when it is uh, allowed to and not share it when it's not allowed to. We believe that people are, have different sensitivities for privacy, and uh, some are superstars and have uh, a lot of uh, at stake. Some others are regular people and just want health to get better overall. So we developed a prototype in which the patient can have more say into what data can be shared. And we are pioneering this in two clinics here at UCSD. So you as a patient can say, do I wish to disclose my data to you, which is an identified research in, in an institution, and then can I also see who looked at my data under the circumstances? And this is a model that has been uh, very uh, well received by several different um, people, different populations, because historically there has been a tremendous mismatch of those who participate in research and the overall population. Uh, we want to get to a, to a more informed consent Believe it or not, you can have 17 pages in order to authorize the use of your data for a certain research. And that is really difficult. So we want greater transparency in the use of data and biospecimens. We want simpler language in consent forms in a tiered consent mechanism. You may want to share parts of your record, but not other parts. That should be OK. Uh, because patients may not know what, what they are sharing, and they may want to share more, they want, may want to share less, and we have to respect these uh, individual preferences. We developed, therefore, this prototype called iConcur, Informed Consent for Clinical Data Use for Research, in which there is a more of this control, and uh, if people want, you can also say, no, uh, as long as, as you are uh, in charge of it as an institution, I'm okay with it, which we happens to be what a lot of the responses we're having now for this prototype. But we want to make sure we offer the options to people and understand why people would be reluctant or not, and that may change according to your own situation or that of a loved one. We also want to make sure we address disparities. And there are populations that have been historically excluded from research uh, because of cultural issues or because of not being offered them, because of the myth that they wouldn't be uh, receptive to research. So American Indian populations, African American populations with a rare disease, Kawasaki disease, um, Latino populations, and those who don't have insurance, these are all important um, uh, individuals to be represented in research studies, and they are not 
currently. So it's very important that we uh, allow more transparency. We explain what data in biospecimens will be used for and preserve the privacy. So we have a whole uh, a lot of research on privacy technology. And this is how you make this data available, but you also make it um, privacy, uh, privacy for the uh, individual patient, for the provider, and for the institution sometimes, because there, there's a lot uh, about preserving uh, the privacy of those who, who care and those who come for, for the office for being treated, but now their data can contribute to research. So this has been the work of many people, many of them uh, who are here to be uh, acknowledged, many students, undergraduates, graduate students, postdoctoral, and several colleagues, um, and primarily a lot funded by the, the US government. So with that, I wanted to close, uh, So since I had the privilege to be, to be the last. You heard amazing things here today. And they all come together because they're all about predictive models, making life better, um, whether through uh, climate or whether through uh, particular direct interventions, indirect interventions in health. So I want to uh, emphasize that what the research we do is very much impactful into what comes to, to you and to the ones that you care about. And with that, I, I want to close and then come back to our host. Mm -hmm.